Welcome to the Common Insect Orders webcast for our entomology unit. Feel free to stop when needed to review your uh, review your information. So, common insect orders. Uh, first of all, insects. If we take a look at the species scape, insects are going to be the largest organism on here. That's representing their diversity, and you can see just in comparison, uh, mammals are represented by this elk, very small in comparison to the insects. That's saying that there much there's much fewer diversity in mammals than there are in insects. Well, insects play a lot of important roles, um, but today we're going to focus on classification. So what is an insect anyways? We know that the insects have segmented body, the head, thorax, and abdomen, and also three pairs of legs, so six legs total. Um, oftentimes we're going to find two sets of wings on insects. Uh, you can tell sometimes by certain features, whether it's their wings, uh, their mouth, or maybe even some structures on the posterior end of the abdomen that can indicate what type of species, or at least what order of species, we're trying to identify. Here's the basic insect taxonomy. Uh, insects belong to the kingdom Animalia, the phylum Arthropoda, subphylum Uniramia, uh, class Insecta, and there's over 1 million insect species and more than 25 orders. We're going to focus on uh, just a few of those orders that are very common and easy to find uh, right around our neighborhoods. A couple things we can look at are different mouth parts. So some organisms have mandibles, which are the chewing mouth parts. So that's a dead giveaway. If we see those, at least it can lead us to identifying uh, that order. Or maybe they have um, various parts like these piercing mouth parts, these coiled mouth parts called a proboscis, or sponging sucking mouth parts, kind of like, like a fly. First story here is Odonata, and Odonata is referring to dragonflies and damselflies. So one way we can tell the difference between a dragonfly when they land, uh, they have their wings out here, so wings are flat. So a dragonfly's wings flat. And our damselflies here, when they land, their wings are folded. Okay, a lot of times we're going to find these around water. They um, do spend part of their life, uh, their an aquatic, there is an aquatic stage of their life. So things to look for again, we have these long slender wings, uh, long thin body, and these usually are not very hard to identify, uh, but we want to refer to this odon again is going to mean toothed and that's going to uh, represent their, their chewing mouth parts. Next one here is Blatidea. These are the roaches. Uh, Blata in Latin is referring to cockroach, and these are cockroaches. Pretty easy to identify. Uh, some things we want to look for are the flat body. So, blat kind of reminds us of flat, and that can help us remember them when we see pictures of them. We also want to look for the spiny legs, and many of them are going to have long antenna. So cockroaches, again, Blatidea. Orthoptera, grasshoppers and crickets, and also some katydids. Orthos, referring to straight wing. Turos is always wing. So you can see as the grasshopper extends its wing, it is uh, fairly straight, and that's where we get this Greek name from. So we'll look for those. Um, jumping legs. That's a dead giveaway. We look at crickets, grasshopper, and katydids. We always want to uh, see these jumping legs. One thing to give us a clue here is hop is right in the middle of the word. 
So if you can recognize hop and put that together with orthoptera and those long jumping legs, um, that is a dead giveaway for identifying grasshoppers and crickets. Sometimes there will be an ovipositor on the females, especially female crickets, we may see this. And this is a uh, structure used for laying eggs. Next one is homoptera. Homo is referring to same, so same wing and these membranous wings are held over the roof of the body and this is a cicada here aphids and other leaf hoppers are all examples of homoptera we can also see this piercing sucking mouth part as well which is also another indication of this species hemiptera uh, hemis is referring to half and if we notice the wings on here, half are solid. All right. And we can actually see a dividing line here. The other half of the wing is going to be membranous. Now, the picture is not real great, but if we looked up close, we might see one of these and see the membrane like wing. So, half solid, half membranous. They also have uh, a beak or a piercing mouth part. Some of those are very useful and can do some major damage and helps with uh, feeding. If we look at the ambush bug that hangs out on golden rods. They definitely are hemipteras and use that piercing mouth part to kill their prey. There's our half membrane that we just discussed. Next one. Next up, Hymenoptera, bees, wasps, and ants. Hymen means membrane, tero means wing. You can see the example here on the, the membrane wing. Chewing mouth parts, four membranous wings. Uh, and then waste is often constricted. So when I think of a, a wasp, many different wasp species, and also ants have some constricted waste. We look closely at bees, we'll also notice this the same. That's Hymenoptera, bees, wasp, and ants. Females uh, might have an ovipositor. Again, that's for depositing eggs or a stinger. As we all know, many bees and wasps are going to have those stingers for defense. And some ants even have stingers as well. Diptera. Die is two. Teros means wing. We can see on our flies and mosquitoes, we're only looking at two wings. So there's our dead giveaway for um, our wings. Now, we remember on our original characteristics of insects, we talked about two sets of wings, and they actually have kind of this vestigial structure here, these halters that uh, maybe were once wings in the past, and over time they have adapted and they no longer have use. Sponging mouth part or some have a piercing mouth part kind of like our we know our mosquitoes have. Next one here, Coleoptera. These are the beetles. This is the most diverse group. Uh, they all have chewing mouth parts. Their forewing, so the forward wing towards the head, is has a special name here that you need to know. Elytra is this really tough shell for them and it's really used for protection. Next one, Lepidoptera. Lepidoptera scale wings, if you've ever touched a moth or butterfly you know that you get a little bit of a dust on your fingers and microscopically we can see that uh, they are little scales. We can also look for the proboscis which they use to feed on nectar moths and butterflies, great pollinators, very important ecological role. And that's an overview of the some of the common insect orders. Feel free to go back and review this when needed and ask questions when you have them.